Hello and welcome to the most exciting episode of Planet Coaster. Not necessarily the most exciting, but today we're going to be getting that excitement rating up because today I'm going to be taking you through my very first Planet Coaster tutorial. You guys requested that I do some tutorials for you and I thought about it and getting rides down, looking at the different elements, trying to get the most out of a ride, maybe the most profit, the most excitement rating, the lowest fear, what's good, what's bad. I figured I'm going to dive into that. I'm going to make some tutorials for that. So today I'm focusing on airtime, baby, airtime hill to be specific. And I have actually designed a hill, as you can see right here, basically a roller coaster that is all airtime hills uh, and came up with a pattern that I can actually communicate to you guys so you can actually recreate the hill at whatever scale you need to create it on whatever roller coaster you have. All right, so let's jump on into this. I'm going to take you through all of the different experiments I've done and show you my results. So as things are running right here, let's go ahead and speed them up. We're going to see kind of something that's kind of interesting. I've, I've, I've set up all of these so that they run the same test at the exact same time here. I'm going to see all these roller coasters crash off the end. <laughs> there goes one, but here comes the rest of them. <laughs> but what we saw there was something that was pretty interesting. Um, this first hill that we have directly in front of us, let me just go back to normal speed here. This is like a typical hill, right? You go up a hill, right? Your, your first hill, you drop down, and then you go over another hill that's slightly smaller. And what that allows you to do is you kind of slow down at the top here. So if we go into testing here, we'll actually see heat maps. And for the sake of it, I'm going to throw on speed. So you can see how the speed, you have blue down below, then you kind of get into white where it slows down and then speeds up again. If we take and we look at the excitement rating here, what you have is you have a large dip right where you saw that low speed. So unfortunately, you're not getting the highest possible excitement rating out of your hill here as you potentially could be if you were to work on an element that was more, uh, that had more negative Gs. So if we take a look at this roller coaster, you can see basically you're not getting a lot of vertical G at all. It's actually, you know, you're not getting negative Gs pretty much at all. So that's, that's kind of the baseline test right there. If we look at this one right here, it's the same sort of concept, but smaller, but with the same hill. So it's, go, it's going a fair bit faster. You should generate negative Gs over the top, but unfortunately, so if we go to ver vertical Gs, let's we'll see right here, you do get a little bit of blue right there. You can see it barely. There's a negative 2.67 G that happens right there. So you definitely get negative Gs, but look at fear. Uh, fear is a little bit higher. We got 5.9 and 6.27. If we compare the fear over here to the fear previous test, what you see is that there's not a lot of fear at all. It's actually all pretty calm. And it's actually a little bit too low right there. Big thing though we want to focus on is excitement. So pretty normal. You get a nice 10, get some speed, but we dip down low over the top here. And if we take a look at this one here, uh, we'll see at just how making this smaller turns out. It's all right. We got 9.41 here, but it does dip a little bit right there. So what I did is I took the same sort of concept and decided to say, what happens if I make a roller coaster that has zero G? So this, once you get over at this point here, once you start uh, driving on this part of the track right here, you should see that you are floating basically in your seat. You're not really getting any vertical G. We're focused right on zero G. So this is a zero G hill. And as it turns out, inside the game, even though personally I think that'd be pretty exciting, it's not terribly exciting. It has about the same sort of result as if you were feeling vertical G down at the bottom of the seat, not negative G, so positive G, right? Positive G, negative G, no G. Those are the three basic hills. So I came up with this path right here. This is the path that has a focus on providing negative G, but it tries to focus it on negative 1G. From my testing, what I have found is that if you can get your negative G to be G one, negative one, then that is about the best you're gonna get as far as excitement rating goes in the game. That's just what it is. So you can see right here, this gets close to one, negative one. It does tip over a little bit more, but it really focuses right around there in that 0 0.8 to 0 0.11 vertical G. And this is something that's easy to repeat and it's easy to make. You could optimize it a little bit more, but we'll get into that just in a second here. But what we have as far as the excitement, look at that solid green, a little bit of dip right there, but you see this, look at this 12.57 on the out 10.95. So if we take this and we compare it to the roller coaster that had 
a lot of negative G, but wasn't very focused on how much it was providing throughout the entire hill, you see that you do get some higher numbers right here, but they're not quite as high. We didn't hit 12s. Um, an 8.42 where it kind of transitions right there. Take a look at this hill real quick, and you'll see that difference. We're over 9, nearly 10 at that sort of transition point, and over 12. So you can see how providing, controlling your negative G really helps you uh, increase your excitement rating for sure. And in fear, it doesn't really cost you too much on the fear. It does, you, know, you get a little bit right there, but that isn't too bad as compared to what we have over here as far as fear rating goes, right? Yeah, I mean, it's fairly comparable. What you're definitely doing is boosting that excitement rating by quite a bit. Now, what I've done here with these two roller coasters, this is the exact same one, but this one I applied some smoothing to. I applied smoothing to the entire hill right here, and what I actually found is that um, reduced the results slightly. They, they're a little bit down, and the, the reason I think they're slightly down is because I believe you transition into negative G earlier in the hill, therefore that results in a more, more a entertaining or more exciting hill for some odd reason. So in this one, I just moved the transition area right here, and I have the similar results where it's pretty close. We got 2.6 right there, 9.73, but as you can see, even though you're smoothing it, which you might want to do all the time, you're not necessarily getting the highest rating possible. So just something to keep in mind right there before you go and just smooth your roller coaster, you might want to try smoothing it just a little bit to kind of make yourself feel better about your transitions and you know your, your design but uh, see how much that actually impacts you. So in order to create this hill, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and place down my roller coaster. I do have a blueprint for this. All right, so there's two things that I need to explain on how this works. Uh, one is scale, right? You have a lot of different ticks that you can run through as far as the length of your track, and that determines how high and far you're going on your track. So this has a one to 15 scale. I believe that's what I counted, and this is at maximum scale right here. But you can change this based on how tall your roller coaster is, and you should get the same results like I built right here. This is the exact same thing. So this is full 15 scale. There's 15 dots right there. So it's 15 large, I guess, the most largest piece you can make. But this one was made at 10. So same sort of thing, but just not quite as long. We can see it right here. They, it'll actually get longer, even though it's hidden behind another roller coaster. Exact same thing, and the results are very, very similar. You see the excitement rating here? 9.28, 12. A little bit lower, because it is a little bit slower, but you know, similar results, and this is the exact same profile, but smaller. So that is scale, and that's how I'm, I'm determining scale as far as the instructions, so you guys can actually go ahead and put this on whatever ride you want. Um, and then my angle of snap for this design is gonna be set to 11.25. And then I'm going to explain it like this. U4, so this is up, now how many ticks, how many of these snaps you wanna go up in order to make this instruction. So there's nine steps to making this hill. So again, we're at the scale that we want. In this case, it's 15, but you can make it whatever you want. And I'm gonna go up four ticks. One, two, three, four. Hit enter right there. We're gonna go up two more. So there you go, that's two. And then you're gonna go down two. So now we're transitioning into negative G. So we're getting that air time. And now they're down two right there. So that's the fourth step. So we've gone up four, up two, down two, down two. And now we really want to transition. We've lost some speed. So we want to increase the angle of attack. So we're gonna go down four now. Down one, two, three, four. So there you go, you're gonna create that part right there. And then you're gonna go down four again. One, two, three, four. So there you go, now you'll have airtime throughout this entire area right there. We're gonna finish it off with down two if possible, depending on the roller coaster you have. Some of them can't go this steep. At that point, you would just start getting out of your hill. But in this one, you can. And then what you're actually gonna have right here, this one actually just goes straight down into the ground, but this is an up six. So one, two, sorry, let me do that. One, two, three, four, five, six and then an up two, which is what that kind of defaults to as far as the ground right there. Again, you have a lot of adjustability of how you want to get out of this hill right there, but the important bit is right there in the middle 
So that's the instruction right there. Once again, that is up, four, up, two, down, two, down, two, down, four, down, four, down, two, up, six, up, two. I'll have that down there in the comment section, uh, or so I say, down there in the more information uh, section below. So what I've done is that is my most optimized airtime hill right there, and that will generate a lot of airtime for your roller coaster. So what we've done over here is I've done two more experiments. I have them on the map right here. One, did it matter what type of roller coaster we had? So I went ahead and tested that on a much different roller coaster. So instead of sort of the Rocky Mountain hybrid roller coaster, we have one that is uh, where you're, the track is up on top of you and it's a much different mounting style. But as we can see right here, the excitement rating is the same. So it doesn't matter what kind of roller coaster style you have. You can see the results there are calculated the exact same. So that was a good test right there. And that's what I found. And here we have it, a ride that I have made complete using the exact same pattern, but slightly making this pattern slower and smaller and smaller as the ride gets slower and slower. And you can see right here, this is an 8.42 with zero effort basically put into it. And the fear isn't even over five. So <laughs> people would love this roller coaster, even though it looks kind of plain in your park. That's the element right there, which is the airtime hill. And look at the live data, or shall we say the results right here. Airtime count 17 different times where we create airtime with a total of 13 seconds right here. If we count how many airtime hills we have, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different airtime hills right there. Now here's a cool thing. This ride can actually, or so to say, this element can be stretched into a corner, and that's what I've done right here. So I've done the exact same instructions right there, up four, up two, etc., except for each time I was rotating it to the right two. So I was snapping it to the right. As you can tell, you got nine steps, and you got to go 180 degrees. So if you do that eight times, you boom, you get right back around and start going the other direction. So you can actually create the exact same sort of sensation of airtime but while going around a corner. So you can really play around with this a little bit more than uh, what you would be able to do to think about it in a straight line. So that's kind of cool. If you look at the vertical G right here, you can see zero G, but you are getting a little bit of negative. Maybe if we zoom in there, might hopefully see some numbers that pop out. Come on, you got 5.2. It's not showing me anything, but if we were to watch the ride, we would see that happen. It doesn't look, you're getting a little light blue right there. It's not quite as great as maybe a hill, but if we see the results right here, so vertical G, one, and this one slows down a little bit. You see it's about a half G. What I ended up doing is I ended up putting some trim brakes in here because I made these elements too small and it was going too fast and I was getting up into the range of negative 2G. So when you are tuning this right here, like I said, you can edit your track and run your test at the exact same time and you're going to want to focus on trying to get that sort of average negative one vertical G for the best results. So there you have it guys, that is the airtime hill. The best I was able to get out of it with it being sort of simplistic, um, clear instructions so you can go ahead and add that to your roller coaster. I think it's one of the best elements you can put on your roller coaster for increasing that excitement rating on it. A lot of the other sort of pre-made loops and upside downs and crazy hills do add a lot of fear, but this one doesn't add a lot of fear, but you get a lot of excitement out of it. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you got something else you want me to kind of explain a tutorial as far as the ride stuff goes, I've got uh, sort of a formula that I'm trying to work on here to bring you more tutorials and you know, explore different things like, okay, how, what is the best Cobra loop? What, what speed should I be hitting that Cobra loop? And how large should it be for my roller coaster? Different questions like that. So if you have some of that stuff, go ahead and leave it down there in the comment section below. Hopefully I'll, I'll be able to answer that question for you. And you know, we'll go from there. At any rate, that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you found this somewhat informative or helpful. If you did, maybe hit that like button on the way up. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace. Brothgar out. Uh, and just for some extra bonus information here, this ride right here is kind of, was a more of a, an experiment of the exact same sort of hill, but taking it and rotating it upside down. Now, while I think this element in real life would be absolutely awesome, as you can see right there, I maybe even want to ride on it, just to give you guys a view of this. As it turns out, the excitement rating on this isn't really that much different from just going over it normally. And if you were to actually just have positive G. So it actually turns out that the excitement rating is less 
overall than it is creating airtime. You can see right here. But I think it's kind of a cool thing right there. All I did is grab the track during edit mode and selected the section I wanted right here, rotated it 90 degrees, and then selected more beyond that, and then rotated it another 90 degrees, and then smoothed out the area where it's really twisting right there to have a really nice transition. So that's like a little bonus tip for you guys, um, if you didn't know how to do that. But that's probably about, about as smooth as you're going to get as rotating over a hill like that. I think it's pretty cool. It came out pretty cool. So there you have it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Stay awesome. Peace.